Hello, everybody. Welcome to New Comic Book Day Book Club. We are back again. I'm sorry I missed one week, and it's possible in the future I might miss another, but we're not going to deal with that. I'm here. I'm hosting. We are back. We're not doing an old book. We're doing a new comic book. Not only that, we're doing a double feature. I'm joined by my fat, my pal, my friend. I, I made a new word, foul. <laughs> Alec from White Will Comics. You know, one may argue that you're at least in some ways, not here every week. Mentally checked out every week. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and then we are having an awesome guest here Guest here tonight. I can't speak. I haven't had anything to drink. I don't know what's wrong with me. You get take over? With me. I'm just tired, I suppose. But the Green Ranger himself is here. Mr. Steve from Burke Family 54 Comics. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How's it going? I'm excited to be here. Look at that wall behind you, the fire. Dragon Sword. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Alec, what happened to your like background, man? Where did all the books go? Uh, I was robbed. Send funds. I'm joking. I'm moving. Um, I meant to grab these before we started, but I have two Megazords right up here. <sighs> I do not have any. I wish I had one. I'll, I'll maybe I'll grab them and show close up at some point once we start nice. talking about that. Nice. Uh, we got some awesome people in the chat. Perry Comics is in there. JP Budget Collecting, Kachung, Gray Matter Hulk, Burks in the chat. Uh, Chris Barrett is always there. Represent. Big O is in the chat. Jason Comics Miss Explained is in the chat. Uh, let's see. Then this old Wolf. Thank you for coming by. Hudak Comics and Movies. Thank you, Russell, for coming by. Nobody, no one. So some awesome folks, and I'm sure that some others are jumping in as we speak. Uh, yeah, uh, I am super pumped. We have two books to read tonight. We're here for Batman Damned. That's the, that's book three, the finale for the Azarello storyline. And then obviously Burke is ready. He's pumped and passionate. We got this uh, next book on our list is The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, issue 40. And I got the sweet... Uh, yeah, Chromium, you glossy, shiny, Bueller I got, cover I here. This, I got this boring old cover A. I have them both because that's how I roll. <laughs> Don't mess with the captain there. That, that's, like a, people, that's a hashtag stay nasty move right there. <laughs> I like that people are not calling me out for being late. People are saying John's back and he's teleporting between shows like Jeffrey. Okay, I'm okay with that. Nobody making fun of me being late because I wasn't late. We were right on time, 8 o'clock. John, I've been on vacation for the last week. That's why you haven't seen me anywhere, says Chris. <laughs> see, who's got the birthday girl? Oh, who that's little girl? It's her birthday today. Happy birthday, sweetie. You rocking it? Read baby dad. Comics. What's baby that? Dad. It says baby dad. Baby dad, yeah. Little dad. She's not on, Kate. She's not on. Kate just wants to say happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yes, I got some ASM going behind me. I got this. I wanted to say a little thank you to Bake the Snake. I bought this in his auction the other day. A little Adam Hughes greatness. Uh, so thank you, Bake the Snake. It arrived perfectly in great condition. He's a champ, and if you don't follow him, he does cool auctions. He's a great guy, so check out Bake the Snake as well. Can I give a quick shout-out to Bake? Do it. Uh, my package arrived today as well, um, and I was, for a moment heart stopped because the outside of it was dripping wet inside clean the whistle i thought you're saying he sent you like beer or something in a in no a no, no. i'm saying he packaged it real nice okay safe and protected rj taylor is in the chat tmc comics the retro savage comics for thomas look at all these people jumping in here they all want to talk about batman damned and this black label so before we jump in, I was curious, Burke, how did you feel about Batman Damned issues one and two? You know, I thought issue one was really good and mysterious and confusing, but like overall, like a really interesting story. Issue two was, I felt exactly the same. Real, I thought it was really good, really interesting. Left you like also again confused. And I feel exactly the same way about issue three. I could not be more confused after reading it. Like, I feel like the whole story 
that's how it was written, is to try to make you confused and come up with their own way of how you feel like the story ended. So. And Alec, I know how you felt about issue one when we did the show on it, but how did you feel about issue one and two together? Um, I loved issue one, uh, weighing notwithstanding or included. Um, what issue one was like a nine for me, no pun intended. Um, going to get some dick jokes tonight. Uh, issue two kind of dipped for me. I think it, uh, left. Yeah. A little, little it hung a little bit to the left. Um, it, it was like, I don't know, maybe a seven and a half. It was a bit of a cold day. <laughs> um, I think it, it clearly, uh, not only for cutting out Harley's boob, but it was clearly edited. And I think it suffered for that a little bit. Um, this, this was like an 11 out of 10 for me. I'll, I'll spoil it. I, I, uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Well, I think, excited. I'm excited already uh, for an, an episode where Alec is going to be effusive. Effervescent. Um, I, I know I caught some of uh, the uh, Unlimited just before this, and you and Jason were talking about um, how you're kind of a little bit on the fence about this issue, and he said it was uh, – um, nihilistic and existential which is probably exactly why i liked it i put that in the chat already I so if you're in the comment bar chat yeah. i'm uh recycling my own jokes for my own show but i can do that this is my house well it's john's house well this is my house for now i don't know what you're meaning metaphorically it's, it's almost like all... brian azarello is writing my my uh <laughs> dialogue tonight <laughs> I will say the thing I've always loved about this run, all, all three issues, is the way we are getting to see Batman interacting with other DC characters that he doesn't normally interact with. And that was totally true in this book. Um, so for me, I was happiest seeing, you know, that the Swamp Thing pulls, uh, out, you know, comes up and has a great little cameo. Constantine all the way through, I think, is a great sort of narrator character. And hey, Zatanna nailed it. Is she in this book? Double take, spit take. Yes, I noticed the ten. Uh, Constantine is written Constantinian so, so wonderfully. Yeah, I think. I mean, it, uh, TMC Comics, Whitewell Comics is hanging to the left um, in all aspects. Yes, accurate. Yeah, I think it's probably outside of the original sort of version of uh, of Constantine in the in the storyline when he had cancer and he's you know dealing with 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 sort of the end of his life potentially. This is my favorite view of Constantine. So I would say this is a, a like a close second for me as far as my favorite view of Constantine. That, what about you? That What's interaction there? between the three of them that you mentioned was just it, every panel was entertaining to me between Swamp Thing and Constantine and and Batman. Uh, TJ said, listen to me, and it'll be fine. Yeah, this whole sequence here, you're saying at the very beginning with the Swamp Thing, yeah. and it's the Enchantress, right? I'm not wrong, right? This uh, uh, villainess. They, they refer to as her as the Enchantress, yes, but I yeah. don't know if he, well, he's- It just reminds me of the horrible Suicide Squad version of the character. Yeah. This, uh, this crazy. Yeah, it's creepy as hell. Yeah. I will say this sequence, as beautiful, it's amazing to look at. There were several times I felt like I was missing a panel. Like, wait, where's Batman in this moment? Where's where's the Enchantress? I don't understand. What is the Swamp Thing hitting here? He's he's the, She was bringing the statues to life. Right. But where did the Enchantress go? She's hiding behind something. <laughs> she She was sending the statues out to do her bidding. Yes, I got that. But then it's like he smashes the statues and then she vanishes. Because she's an enchantress. Okay. You're letting things go, and I appreciate you for doing that. Here's my uh, Zatanna, though. She's looking all fine. Did we lose Burke? Did he run away? Yes. He left us a message that said that his child is not going to sleep. See, this is what oh. happens when you don't hashtag say nasty. Okay. <laughs> and there's dead, dead, dead legs. legs. Looking very nice. And then, yeah, dead bo that booty. 
Them, them tail lights. That booty. Working, working it. She is magic. Oh, oh, she's magic. I'm gonna get copyrighted for that. Not for two lines of a really bad rendition. Um, so yeah, I did really. I mean, artwork. There's, there's no one that's gonna argue that the artwork is anything but stellar, right? Lee, Lee Bermejo. That was Lee. my favorite part. Actually, was the art the it's, whole way through, from issue one through issue three. I thought it was great. I like to see the Batman suit like different. Yeah. And like this, I love the way that he drew the blood as well. I thought that was really interesting. And I will say about the art in this, a lot of times when you see artists like this that do fully rendered work, um, I would say Alex Ross also does not fall into this trap where they, a lot of artists who do this type of work, like take panels off. Uh, he does not. Every panel is he's putting every bit of his himself into it. Steven Spock says, "Spoiler, haven't read it yet." Uh, this is a full spoiler show. This is the wrong show to be watching like that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the entire ending of this. So I just showed you the best hottest drawings in the whole book. So you just watch, watch it on the replay. Yeah, deal with that. Um. I want to say something that that uh, Jason Comics Miss Explained mentioned that I hadn't really considered much was that this is a direct sequel connection to Azarello's The Joker. Yeah, here we go into spoiler territory. I, I just I, I I had not even I don't know that maybe I only read The Joker once, and I don't know that I remember it well enough to even know connective tissue. Is there like a real solid connection here, or is it just kind of like loose tangential stuff? Uh, I I don't remember it well enough to be honest okay. I've, I'm, I haven't I'm not read gonna... it so I don't know either okay because yeah, I don't know what you mean it. it's not really necessary to have read any of that because I could enjoy it just fine um, but he had mentioned it and it made me curious to want to go back and reread that story so um, maybe it's because I'm an existential nihilist that I feel like I got it so uh, I'm kind of curious as to where this lost you both and see if I can offer my perspective and see if you buy it. I think for me, the issue, the main issue I had was they kept sort of like reinventing the story and saying, no, he's traveling back in time to his younger self. No, he, he's changing history. No, he's not changing. I'm, I'm with myself as a young and things are totally different. No, they're exactly the same. It seemed like a lot of like half made decisions. So that whole tr time travel bit kind of bugged me. Well, was he actually traveling through time or was he just visualizing this too? And this was all part of his, because there's a line that says um, it was a fatal stab and I knew it. Okay. So I know this is kind of like a common trope, but is this just a death dream? And Batman is the one who died, you mean? Yeah, well, Joker didn't die, clearly, spoilers. No. I mean, whether or not it was due to Batman's actions in this real world that he goes back and he accepts this judgment and is kind of... You know, or is it because that is just what happened and yeah, it was all a dream. I used to read Word, Word Up magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. <laughs> Gray Matter Hulk says time stopped on the bridge after Batman died. I, I don't know that that makes sense of the story because then what has he been doing ever since then running around and fighting getting raped by harley all that sequence doesn't make a whole lot of like what's the point of all that wishful it's thinking crazy dream now we're, we're in that my favorite like like let's just smoke a little weed it doesn't matter what happens it's all a dream let's just get some crazy shit down on paper and make it happen well the good news is it doesn't matter what happens because it's dc black label and this is like a an elseworld story anyway and I don't mind Elseworld stories. You talk about like Red Sun, which I think is excellent. I just, I want it to feel like there's a point. 
And if it's all just like, let's just do some crazy shit and it doesn't matter what happens, then it's kind of a useless story at that point, which is my last night on earth frustration. Okay, now we got a talking head Joker. Let's just have it. Let's just do it. Why? Hmm. Because it makes things pointless. It's kind of, for me, it's the natural born killers effect, right? This sequence is going to be in black and white. This one's going to have crazy color. This one's going to have opera music in the background. Why? Because it's some crazy crap. And we'll just throw crazy crap out there. Exactly. To my point, that's very nihilist because there is no point to anything. I don't mind a little nihilism. All nihilism is kind of like, well, now, why am I even reading this? Because it doesn't matter. Well. True. True. I That's thought, a good point. I, like, I guess I guess we should stop this show. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought of it that way, John. Go ahead. Uh, I felt like like Gray Matter Hulk said this up here that he felt like it was kind of like Dante's Inferno, like the whole time it's just like in purgatory. Um, isn't that what everyone's been saying about the show Lost too? That that whole show was don't purgatory. Don't you don't want to get John started. Started. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want me to go down that road. Okay. <laughs> no, I think yeah, people definitely said that about Lost and, and other movies and shows like, you know, uh, Jacob's Ladder and things like that. Um, there's obviously those elements. Uh, I feel like those elements work in a story where they're clearly trying to sort of uh, fillet the character and let you understand them better through whatever this inferno that they're traveling through. This doesn't really do that. This just sort of throws Batman on a random mystery that there's no point to, and he's not going to ever solve because it didn't ever really happen. Counterpoint. Um, I, you know, there's you bring up purgatory. There's you know, not to get too heavy-handed with everything, but Batman does say a line with like, "This is the hell of my own making." Like this is what he is putting him through because of the guilt of what he has done. Um, and I think I would argue that it does kind of do something and, and show more detail of the character because it is showing that he is, you know, Batman is often shown as this kind of robotic, um, do anything it takes type of, uh, cold-blooded, emotionless person um, because he has to be. And this kind of shows him as this guilt-ridden um, kind of emotionally torn, you know, scared child that he has never let, let go of that. And on top of that, you know, he's made this decision to murder somebody or in his eyes, murder somebody um, It, it, yes. Gray Matter Hulk says he intentionally let Joker fall on the bridge, sending him to his death because he could live on after Batman and go unchecked. I don't know that I fully understand that sentence. I I can't imagine a Batman who I'm going to die, but I want the Joker to live on just so he can mess up my city. Well, he Batman says like, I wish he were still alive. It shows Batman as being vulnerable. I, I, I get some of that. I do think this last issue does give us a little view into Batman. But my point is, if the whole point of this entire thing was to get inside of a Batman in the afterlife or on his way, wouldn't each issue have a little bit of that? But the previous two issues are just like a straightforward sort of bizarre mystery story, not having nothing to do with Batman's inner workings. Um. Yeah, and I think that's why I enjoyed this one the best because I think it, the first two issues were kind of, well, no, the first issue had inner workings with, with the whole scene where he's naked. That shows like that's outer workings. Hmm. Best case scenario. Um. A lot of people discussing the value and the benefit of the dark label. Uh, Burke, I know you said that the you feel very strongly the black label has been a big success. Well, what do you think? How are you thinking about that? Well, I feel that way is because everyone is always talking about Batman Damned, and I know it's sold a lot of books. Um, everyone's been picking it up. Everyone's liking. Um, well, at least I liked Last Night on Earth. 
and everyone's been talking about um, Superman Year One. They have all these talented writers and artists all working on like these books that are kind of like Elseworlds, like you guys talked about. And I just feel like it's like a really mature book for us older readers that like normally people are going to pick up just like, hey, Superman, nice guy. He's going to beat up this bad guy. Well, this one's talking about people dying and like being judged and all that kind of stuff. I just feel like it's really good. Like it's been a success because it's more adult and it's built toward people like us. So I don't know what the sales figures look like. I just feel like overall it's been a big From a creative standpoint, you're saying? Yes. Creatively, I think it's a, it's really good. I love that stuff. Uh, Comics Miss Explains says in the chat, Batman thought he was going to die from the stab wound, and so he let Joker die, and Spectre damned him for it. Batman felt remorse for his inaction. Yeah, I would th think that's, you know, pretty pretty accurate. Pretty, um, the, the inaction part, I think, is definitely right there in your face, where he... He feels badly for making the choice to not save him when he could. Like he doesn't really technically kill him, um, but he chooses not to save him. And I think going back to your question about why he would want Joker to run wild is, you know, Batman is also a bit of an egotist and maybe he kind of wants to show that now that I'm gone, you know, you didn't really love me or respect me for what I was doing for you. So here's the Joker. Good luck with him. Maybe that's too grim. Yeah, it doesn't feel like my vision of the Batman would be somebody that's like, screw you, Gotham. You get the Joker now. Good luck with it. It just doesn't seem like my, my – the Batman I've always known is the one that's like, with his dying breath, he's going to do the get the job done. I feel the same way. Batman is moving to image comics. <laughs> yeah. hey, can I make, how about this point as a discussion idea, as far as the black label success, Chris Barrett mentioned something along the same lines is the blacks. Does the black label need violence, language, and nudity, nudity to function? Because my feeling was issues two and three of this series seem to be a little neutered in some ways, in which no case pun intended. in some cases intended. I, it felt very much like the last two issues, there was almost no reason why it had to be a black label anymore. Like, I feel like that's the only failing I have for the black label is they stripped away the only real function of it. Now there's another metaphor. Hey, now. The only function was those other adult elements and they seem to be taking them all away. I think that saying that it, it needs it um, is a bit strong because you, you start forcing that stuff in and it can feel forced. It can like muddy what otherwise is a perfectly fine story that just has boobs shoved in your face and it feels unnecessary or a way. I'll say right now, boobs shoved in my face, never unnecessary. <laughs> but I will say- A button it, in my face is definitely- Yes, enough. always great too. Um, I would. I will say it needs the elbow room to be able to do that if it wants to. Like it's sh it. The point of the black label was to be an an R rated label for. It was supposed to be a Vertigo, which R you know R I P Vertigo hashtag gone too soon. Um, but uh, yeah, like if if they want to put swears or ultra violence or nudity or whatever they want in it. I think that they should be allowed to. And well, that's my point. I feel do feel like they're basically pumping the brakes on that now. So that even right. a story that should have it isn't going to have it. And then what's the point of the black label? Right. Agreed. I think it's it's the the censorship is the issue, not the lack of. Because obviously the stories that they want to make here already need those things. The stories that they're going to choose, ideally the stories that they should be choosing for the black label are ones that should have those elements intrinsically in what they're trying to tell nobody no one says exactly don't force stuff but go hard i read that as don't force butt stuff i was like that's good advice oh boy hashtag stay nasty <laughs> see what you get now brooke brooke's been like hey I, it's, it's i'm excited i get to be on the book club and now he's like what the hell was i thinking what's going on with this book club <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't gotten to the Morphin Power Rangers yet. 
Yeah, dude, I'm excited when we get to Wait that. Wait till we get to that butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, but how do you feel about the the the, the edgier stuff in the black label, Burke? Well, I, I honestly don't like see the edgier stuff outside of just issue one. Honestly, like the last night, I didn't see anything super edgy about that. That felt like, like I said it a billion times, it felt like exactly like Snyder's New 52 run. And Superman Year One, I don't even know what to call that. <laughs> but it was not pushing the envelope whatsoever. And I don't really feel like they need to necessarily in certain things. Like you don't need to be showing a wang every, every you know, issue. But like I do feel like they need to be more like this issue. I didn't feel like there was any violence whatsoever in the whole issue. It was more like making you think about what's happening. And I do feel like for the black label to succeed, they do need to have more violence. But they don't necessarily need the nudity. That's how I feel. And – yeah, I mean, I haven't read Superman, so the the Superman Black Label book, so I can't speak to that one or what it has or should have. But it just felt to me when you're talking about guys like Miller and Azarello, that, 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 that ideally they would be picking a story that would fit this mold really well and then use it to its fullest. Um, I mean, they didn't use the Batwing to its fullest. Hey, now, um, hold in that cave, damn it. Comics Six Explained said, when we see in a super wang, we couldn't handle it. Um, I don't know. I, I'm all, like, I'm a big Vertigo reader, so I, I'm all for nudity in comics. Faith, hashtag faithless. Hashtag faithless. Hashtag get those, open up your bagged covers. So, so story-wise... How did you guys feel like this one wrapped up what they were trying to do from the first two issues? Uh, go ahead. I don't know if it really even wrapped it up. I felt like each individual issue could have been like, I don't know. I felt like all three issues were exactly the same outside of the ending. Like the ending kind of wrapped it up, but like overall, I, I don't necessarily think like after reading this one, I don't really feel like you need to read necessarily all three because i feel like it did the whole, like all all of them are just pretty much exactly the same that's how i feel what about you alec um i felt like they each kind of felt standalone to a point so i was going to say that this besides like a little bit of setup this issue could have been a standalone issue and i would have enjoyed it just as much so um yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't disagree with that yeah I, and for me I do feel like if they had taken little pieces from the issues one and two and put them at the beginning of this issue. Called in that cave. What, what? I already said that joke. Yeah, you said little pieces. Oh. If they had taken some of the pages from the first two books and put them onto this one, I think you would have had a, a, a more interesting story with a beginning, middle, and end and not this sort of fragmented no, it's about this, but it's really about this, and we're kind of going to get to it in the last issue. But we didn't—we really, skipped over it in the first two. Uh, it wasn't all about Bruce's psyche. I felt like, especially the the second issue, and maybe it's just the second issue got so heavily edited or whatever. I don't know. Um, but again, I I read it primarily for the really great art, and again, seeing Batman interact with the likes of a Constantine or a Swamp Thing or a Dead Man. Because I, I felt like that stuff was the most riveting interaction and, and, and the drama of it. Uh, <laughs> Comics Miss Explained asked, do you think we'll get a Joker damned? Did also, you guys see Chris Barrett's? Well, <laughs> well Joker. Joker he's had several. several. He's had several. Uh, also, Immortal Biggie Shack in the house. What's up? Strapped up. He had one that was being held for review, and I just let it fly. I generally let what Chris Barrett says fly, but you never know. Was it the one about Lois Lane's? <laughs> it was definitely that one. Yeah. Which, hey, Lois Lane one is coming, but I don't think it's a black label. No black label, but <laughs> hey, Greg Rucker, never know. Huh. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, the hot take that that book's going to be really good. Yeah, I saw that out in the uh, in the chat there on uh, the Comic Core. Uh, so what are the other black labels that are coming up? Does anybody know what the other ones that are coming down the, the way here? I've not heard of any others. There's 
at least two more, I believe. I mean, somebody was there. saying there's a swamp thing one or something. <laughs> Jimmy Olsen, damn, looks forward to that. To the <laughs> of our parents. That's a solid. Very well played. Yeah, a Joker damned would be kind of interesting. Uh, I, I would like separate stories, obviously, that don't have to be damned or what have you. Um, there okay. is a handful of other ones coming up. Um, there is any, Batman. Any Wonder Roman? What's that? Any Wonder Roman? I don't see it on the list, but this is Wikipedia, so who oh. knows for sure. Batman 3 Jokers is supposed to be Black Label. Um, the sequel to The White Knight, so the Cur Batman Curse of the White Knight is also supposed to be Black Label. And then That's what Sam I Am said in the chat there too, yeah. Harleen is supposed to be Black Label, and then the Joker slash Harley Criminal Insanity is also supposed to be Oh, it sounds like you got at least three more chances to see Harley Quinn's boobs. Miss, Ex <laughs> Miss Explain says there's a Black Lightning one and a Wonder Woman. Hell yeah. Interesting. They're not, they're not going to show Wonder Woman's boobs. So they'll show I'm Harley. hoping they'll for show. some semi time. They'll, they'll show, they'll, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> they'll, they'll show Harley's boobs. I, I can oh, promise. There, yeah, there's a Wonder Woman, Diana's daughter coming up. Already Wonder lost. Me. Woman has Already lost me right there. Good title. Done. So whole bunch. I get you, Chris. I get you, Chris. Chris is letting it love, letting it fly there. They said somebody's saying that there's a Watchmen one as well. A black label. You no, know, I saw that on the list as well, but I wasn't sure. Leave Watchmen alone. I obviously DC can't do that. Yeah. Clock, what is it? What is it? Something clock, Doomsday Clock. Yeah, Doomsday Clock has been pretty good, I think. And when it comes out, so uh, I guess there's no fourth issue here. Are I guess the, the question then becomes will you seek out or at least look, uh, take the chance to potentially pick up future black label comics? Um, I mean, if the creative teams look good. I did not buy the Superman one because I think Frank Miller is a crazy old man now, personally. And from the reviews I read, I'm not mistaken. Alfred Pennyworth damned. The Pennyworth Wang, old and shriveled. Oh my gosh. Nobody, no one also says it will be called Harley's Breasts. Damn. <laughs> uh, I will say uh, I would pick up a hardcover of this. Double bagged. <laughs> Got to double bag it. <laughs> Burke, what about you? As far as uh, black label, future black label properties, you're a big DC guy. You've been reading a bunch of these. Uh, do you feel like you, the, the consistency is enough there that you'd pick up future uh, black labels? You know, I don't know if I'd really search it out, but like, like I wasn't even going to pick up issue one until everyone like the night before it came out. Like I didn't pre-order, like I wasn't going to pick it up. And everyone's like, oh, it's so good. So I was like, okay, I'll go pick it up. And it was. Um, Superman year one wasn't great, just like Alex said. It wasn't year one. It was like year one through six, 18, whatever it was. Uh, but uh, I don't know if I'd necessarily like ser search it out, but I'll probably still continue picking them up because I am a DC guy. Uh, RJ Taylor says, All-Star Superman, DC's New Frontier, Killing Joke, Ronin, Batman, Arkham Asylum, all Black Label coming soon. Those are all re-releases that are coming out on, with Black Label stickers on them. So, those so are not, they're not adding any material. Yeah, new, I know New Frontier is already out okay. as a Black Label. But it's not like they're going to add like Joker Wang in the middle of their Joke or something. As far as I know, that's not the case. Okay. Yeah, they're going to be re-releasing Kingdom Come as well. Did you guys, you guys ever read that? Yeah. yeah. Great story. Okay, so that's interesting, the future of the Black Label. And obviously, the future in 2020 seems to be sort of folding in some of that vertigo in with the Black Label in the future, right? Am I re remembering that right? Exactly right. All right. So for me, uh, yeah, I think I'm kind of on the same boat as you guys as far as if the creative team and the idea is interesting enough, I might seek it out. Uh, but I did pass on the the Superman year one once I saw the covers and I heard the idea I was like, yeah, you know, I don't need that one <laughs> I'm gonna allow that 
I'm laughing at Comic Six Explained. Kingdom Come, never mind. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> uh, this is comics with kids. No, I'm kidding. Not no, it is most certainly not. Not tonight. Uh, no, you, 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 <laughs> you both have uh, family friendly channels, and I, I'm the one Jamoke who's the. I'm just ruining everything. White whale comics with kids. With, with dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Superman peeing year one. Wow. All right. <laughs> Chat has derailed as usual. All right. So we're we ready to move on to some Power Rangers. Hell yeah. I got my Zords. Let's see those. All right. Here's this guy. That looks Here's like it. SPD. What's that? That looks. Uh, oh, wait. What? Which one is that? This is uh, from Wild Force, aka okay. Gow Ranger. Um, that's an alligator's tail. That's the sword. But um, the real, my favorite one that I have, I have three, two of them are only displayed, is this one. This is the main um, Wild Force rain uh, because it has metal pieces. It's like super nice, high quality piece. Um, and they stopped doing it for the rest of them on this line. And I think moving forward, I think this is the last one with, with metal pieces, but um, this is my favorite season of Power Rangers, by the way. Uh, that's a hot take, man. Yeah, come at me. <laughs> I'm jealous. Alec is always full of hot takes. He's out there pushing the envelope. <laughs> yes, I like it. So, so you guys I, have not been reading Power Rangers then. I was going to say, I may need you to give us a quick, uh, quick update on Power Rangers and where they are. This is issue 40. I have only watched the show a little bit when I was younger, and I've never read a Power Rangers comic, so I was coming at this really, really raw. Okay, so you just want me to give like a brief history of what the Power Rangers are? You want me to time you? Give you like two minutes? Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So uh, Rita Repulsa came out of this moon thing, a uh, trash can, and she came back to conquer Earth. She was put in there by the Power Rangers originally, like I don't know how many years ago. Um, and so Zordon's forced to pick five teenagers with attitude. He picks uh, the Red Ranger, Jason, the Yellow Ranger, Trini, the Black Ranger, uh, Zach, the Blue Ranger, Billy, and the Pink Ranger, Kimberly. Um, and they start fighting Rita. But Rita quickly realizes that she needs a Power Ranger of her own to fight the Power Rangers. So she gets the green power coin and has Tommy uh, fight for her under a spell. And they break the spell by destroying a sword. And so he now joins other five Power Rangers um, and becomes six Power Rangers. Well, since he used to fight for her, she drained all his power so he can no longer be the Green Ranger. So Zordon creates a new power, the White Light Power, and he becomes the White Power Ranger. During that time, uh, the Red Ranger, the Yellow Ranger, and the Black Ranger realize the show is getting pretty big. They want to get paid more money. They say no. <laughs> They replaced them without even really telling them. That is how uh, Zach became Adam, Trini became Aisha, and Jason became Rocky. So I don't know if you noticed that in the story. Yes, I did notice that. There were and, and they changed people. Zords throughout as well. So uh, And then Lord Zed comes in because he wants to conquer Earth. Um, and when Rita repulses, can't really do it by herself. So. <sighs> Boom. And now we're to this issue, which sort of has a little bit of a preface to it and then dives right into the White Ranger sort of in full power mode. And now this is, I have only read issue one and issue 40. Um, I read issue one when it first came out and did not continue to pick it up. But uh, it this is a totally different story than the TV show. Completely different. Completely different. They they can do all sorts of different things in the comic book world than they could do on TV. Because obviously. they don't have to pay actors. And they uh, also have a new uh, uh, they have a new writer and uh, Ryan Parrott. He he had been doing the Go Go Power Rangers um, while Kyle Higgins did Mighty Morphin. And then when uh, the last storyline ended, Shattered Grid, uh, a new writer took over, and then Ryan Parrott took over for her after. Uh, the last nine issues or so didn't do so great since it wasn't uh, a normal team everyone was used to. So, 
Um, now, I don't know if I'm going to show my hand too much about how much of a nerd I am, but uh, are, are you into the Japanese versions at all, or are you strictly a Mighty Morphin fan? I'm strictly Mighty Morphin, but I do know of the Super Sentai and how much Saban used their footage and how he asked them to go back and shoot some more just for his TV show so they could use it. Yeah. So Sentai is what Power Rangers is based on, and it starts. It started in the 70s in Japan. And um, it you know, ran for a number, a number of years. And it, most of the... Uh, my, so every season was different. It was a different set of Rangers and a different set of Zords. And Mighty Morphin, when they made an American, they continued, like Mighty Morphin went on way longer than any other uh, Japanese season. So part of the reason why they did the movie and they changed the Zords and stuff is because they're running out of footage. They actually, anytime you saw the, the Zords, um, the, the man in suits, uh, or even a lot of them fighting was original footage. So they were just running out of stuff. So they had to kind of, but then they started adapting the Japanese um, mode of doing the show and every season became a different cast after a while. Um, and here's an interesting bit of trivia for you. Did you know Mighty Morphin was not the first Power Ranger show in the United States? I did not know that. There was a very brief, a few years before Mighty Morphin started, there was a very brief show on USA Network that they just used the footage straight and they made tried to make it like kind of a, a silly campy show, um, making fun of it, and it did not do well. That's so interesting. There's there's your deep dive into Power Ranger history. Joe already typed it in. The more you know, Rainbow. The more you know. So what, <laughs> as people that don't normally pick up Power Rangers, what did you guys think of this issue jumping in? I didn't love it. Uh, I, you know, I, I was trying to follow along. There's definitely a lot. It's, it's like jumping into a, well, it, probably any comic, but in my head, when I jump into a comic, I'm unfamiliar with kind of in the middle. It's, it's a lot like jumping onto a soap opera and everybody's talking about people that aren't in the room. You know, there's a lot of that, like, Oh, but I was at Rebecca's and I saw Susan and she said hi to Billy. And he, and so there's a lot of like, the Megazord from so and so, and she carried this from that place, and this, and I'm like, I don't know what any of these uh, proper nouns are, but it sounds like this guy's mad at these people, you know. So there was definitely some of that for me, where it was like there was a lot of things to know that I didn't quite understand. I could follow it, like I could figure out kind of what was going on. Obviously, the bad guy looks like a bad guy, the good guys look like good guys. There's not a lot of like concern there, uh, but as far as the like other layers, when they're talking about, uh, was it Repulsa? Rita Repulsa. Yeah, Rita Repulsa. They talk about her, and I remember her from the con from the show. Um, but the new villains, I don't quite know who they are. So when I see like behind their head and then the face reveal, I'm like, okay, that guy's kind of creepy, but I don't know him. Uh, and there were a couple of those kind of villainy kind of moments, and they yeah. were always talking about like other plans and things from other places that I was like, I don't quite know that. So for me, it was a, I knew that I would have that problem going in. Um, it was a lot talkier than I thought it was going to be. I was expecting a lot more action, and it was just a lot. This was a very talky issue for me, but maybe that was just my take on it. What about you, Alec? Um, I, I enjoyed it well enough. Uh, I thought the, the art was interesting for me because some panels and some shots, I was like, this looks amateurish. Some of the action scenes, the actual movement of the characters was tremendous but the legibility of what was happening was not um so i, I don't know i was kind of on the fence it like as a power ranger fan it was cool to see like the take on what happened at the end with the three characters who leave the show um it was cool to see uh kind of this retelling, I guess, of, of Tommy's journey. Um, I think this was kind of a more interesting way to do it, maybe. Although uh, it gave you, gives you that very brief um, kind of re 
like catch up pages of at like, the beginning. You mean the whole yeah. one? So I I feel like actually reading that. Uh, Tommy is still the White Ranger. Um, he just the, the way he becomes the White Ranger is different. Uh, boring kid in comics asks. Um, so I mean, it sounds like though you know more about Mighty Morphin than I do, despite my long explanation about the Japanese origins. Um, so, it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. That this would you agree that this is kind of like a, a better, um, like more interesting way that they did it in this, or do, do you prefer the TV shows? No, I definitely agree it is way more interesting i liked what they did like i was not a fan of shattered grid because it started off with which is a previous like big event they did it started off with them killing tommy the green ranger so they're having to fight lord draken which is an evil tommy green ranger from another dimension who's going around and taking everyone else's powers and becoming like this dude it looks like the green ranger with all these different powers on him and then he comes back at the very end and they say he's alive somehow, and he has always been alive. And then they rewrite history, and now, and they say at the beginning that the history that they're rewriting won't be exactly the same, just like a broken glass will never be exactly the same. So when they come back, while the the team is still there, things have changed. And like you said, it it, it does seem like a more interesting way to do that. And I absolutely love uh, how Ryan Parrott did that. I was. Interested to see if they were actually ever going to bring the White Ranger in because he was obviously the most popular with the movie that came out in '95. Yeah, I, and I I'm surprised when when John said that you wanted to do this book, I was like, oh, why? What's the deal with issue 40? And to find out that it was the first appearance of the White Ranger, I I was shocked at their ability to hold back on that because you'd think they would like pushed it out in the first couple of arcs because the green ranger white ranger thing was so big in the in the cart in the show that uh, you know you would have thought that they would have used that as a selling point to get people into the comic but they waited 40 issues you know almost four years three years they did like a whole bunch of covers and like they kept hinting at the white ranger or the white ranger's powers and different issues but they never actually like came out with Tommy as a white ranger until now, which is like you said, extremely shocking because I believe he became the white ranger in season two. Yeah. It's three full seasons and like each season is like 40 episodes. So, so, so that you're saying this first time we see Tommy in the white as the white ranger is this issue because they don't really show a moment where he becomes the white ranger. It's just like he is the white ranger. That's it. That's, and that's part of the story is because like he went in like when they changed time he was the green ranger and they said you know when you come back out no one's going to remember anything that happened and the time will be different and then like just like they showed it now he is suddenly the white ranger and they talk about how they they, they talk in an issue about how zordon says we, you know we gave you the white light we we made you the leader for a reason because in all the previous issues jason was always the one who that's a red ranger who's always yeah. dealing with being the leader and staying after and doing all these extra hours of work. Well, now since Tommy, when they brought him in as a white Ranger in the TV show, it talked about how this is your new leader, Tommy. So now he's the one dealing with all that. So then and, this kind of opens it up for the possibility of the, you know, the explaining of the backstory of how this happened in, in future issues. Absolutely. They can absolutely retell it, which will be, I'm excited to see that. And Tommy in the show, I believe, was also at one point a Red Ranger and a Black Ranger. That is correct. He has been two Red Rangers and a Black Ranger. So they got plenty of room to work with there. Yes. Um, and they obviously introduce another canon of Ranger at the end. Um, yep. The th the the uh, with Jason and Trini and Zach. You mean? Yep. The yep. last page, which is super interesting. I really like that actually. They don't ever uh, show exactly like what team they are, but yeah, they look like like samurai or ninja rangers or yeah, something. like one of those two. I agree. Can you hold up that panel, Alec? Yeah, there it is. So that's the last page. Spoilers where uh, they're calling them from, and they talk about the multiverse in this, which I thought Marvel had a copyright on, but I guess not. Um, 
and how there there are kind of multiple rangers and there is actually an episode of the show where every red ranger from every season gets together to fight a force and oof, it's called forever red yeah that's a that's a good one man it is good it's really good um so if they do that in a comic i'm i'm on board it, but it seems like they're starting to build up that uh the world beyond mighty morphin which is cool so what they did real quickly with the world beyond mighty morphin and in the shattered grid storyline that i said i didn't like very much they brought in all the other teams that he that Lord Draken had not taken a power from, and all of them fought together against Lord Draken and all Oh man, all right. I'm gonna have to check out a trade on this. So and this that's trade. what Jason Comics has explained said the same thing. He heard that Shattered Grid was great and he wanted to read it. You know, it was I didn't like the way it started and I didn't like the way it ended, but in between I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> Sammy strikes back. I was the yellow ranger oh. on Halloween when I was little because I didn't think I was pretty enough to be the pink ranger. Don't you dare. Hold, you, you hold it up. You hold that head high. You be the pink ranger. If you want to be the pink ranger, if I want to be the pink ranger, just rock it. So Comics Mix Explained says there's a Power Rangers Team NT crossover, right? There was with, I believe, the Space Rangers. And at that time, Team NT also had a female uh, turtle, which was really weird and interesting. That did happen. Hmm. Back, like uh, after I stopped watching, obviously. So. Oh, you stopped watching? I I did. Oopie. No, I'm kidding. I don't watch. I go back and watch it with my daughter, though. She likes no, it. Yeah. I don't even know what their what the season is now. It got like Disney. Once Disney owned it, they started putting it on all sorts of weird channels and uh, weird times, and you couldn't keep track of it. It's gone through, I believe, four different owners. It was Saban, and then it was Nickelodeon, and then Saban brought it back, and then they then they sold it to Disney. So, for a while at Hollywood Studios and Disney World, you could meet the Power Rangers as like characters, and I have a number of pictures of myself in awesome karate poses with the Power Rangers. That is sweet. Have you guys ever seen that picture of me in a Green Ranger? I'm sure you have. But if you haven't, here you go. I was going to say, we're not seeing that right now. It's right here. Me and Tommy. We're like best friends, pretty much. You know, <laughs> you got to meet him. He signed some like comics. He, he, he took a picture with me. You know, cool dude. So That's awesome. <laughs> he has a pink ranger would shut down Instagram. Chris Barrett says, John, just remember God is okay with pride unless you're Catholic. Um, I'm not Catholic, so woo <laughs> <laughs> people are supporting me as the pink ranger. There you go. Hey, Halloween costume in the making. I think we should get together a YouTube crew and all go as Power Rangers. Heck yeah. Pink Ranger. I may or may not be working on a new intro for my YouTube that may or may not involve a morphine sequence. <laughs> One of my great regrets in my life, I worked overnights at Toys R Us for a while, a long time ago. And it was right around the time uh, Wild Force was out. And they had uh, a almost life-size display mannequin of the Red Ranger from that series. And it was like fully suited and everything. It had a helmet. I mean, it was all, couldn't take it off, but it was, you know, like five and a half feet tall. Um, and the display came down and it was just in the break room and it was supposed to be given away in some random drawing. And the person who got, who won it, never came and got it. And I wish I had stolen it on my last day. I'm not saying I would have, but I totally would have. <laughs> I just, I could not figure out how to like get out the door with it. I, I would have just had to like walk out just like brass balled. Just do it. Just do it, man. Yeah. What are they going to do? <laughs> Probably call the police because it was a very expensive thing. <laughs> what was the first Power Rangers in comics? I believe it was in like 94. 
or 95, and Marvel owned it at the time. So there are some comic books from the 90s of the Power Rangers, but they're not worth like anything. I said the Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Which interesting. Oh, no, it was Zoro in uh, Batman then. I was going to say, ah. <laughs> print bugging it all back. <laughs> well, yeah, and obviously Batman Dam number one had a pink ranger. Gross. <laughs> uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting all sorts of suggestions on how to have stolen it. Just run, Sammy says. Green Matter Hawk says in a cart. Comics explains that pretend you're dancing with it out the door. Um, I really could have used you guys back then. Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, my God. I love that show as a kid. No, no lie. That was so cheesy, but so good. <laughs> Say you're taking it to the winner's car as a favor. Oh, there you go. You guys are better at stealing stuff than me. I've just been like, uh, I'm stealing it. <laughs> just fucking run, man. Oh, man. That's good stuff. So, uh, obviously, I'm assuming reading issue 41, Burke. I have pre-ordered 41, 42, and 43, the foil variants, because they're going to keep doing this with these Ranger helmets. So, like, 41 is the red Ranger, and then 42 is the pink, and 43 is the blue. So all the cover Bs are going to just be co copies of issue zero, and just they're making them into foil covers. And they're also making them virgin covers. On the, on the original ones, they have a little Mighty Morphin logo. Yeah. The only one I have is the, the Red Ranger. I, I bought that when it first came out. But they, they all look really awesome together, for sure. Hell yeah. Alex? Although, it is, it is a bit, they are a bit krang-ish, where it looks like they're just kind of like holding their heads in front of their stomachs, <laughs> tying it back to... Uh, uh, Airboy the Barbarian says, wasn't the first season of Power Rangers racist? They had an African American play the Black Ranger and an Asian actor play the Yellow Ranger. Kind of insensitive. Yeah, that's been, uh, you know, Discussion. I've heard that. I've heard that a number of times before. Yeah, I've heard that one as well. Me too. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Chris Barrett says, Airboy, not back then. Yeah, anything went back then. That was the 90s. <laughs> you know, they were coming off the cold, coke fueled 80s. They were still coming down off that high. It was like, yeah, whatever. No one will notice. Everybody noticed. Um, uh, I don't know with the state of my pull list, I think it probably is not going to make the cut, but I'm not, not interested in hearing the rest of the story. Yeah. I think I'd be more interested in, in, in grabbing some of the trades going and, you know, hitting the library and grabbing some of the trades than, than doing it on a pull list. But that's just me. I think I'd prefer to go back and start towards the beginning and not necessarily just continue on at 40 and 41. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know that I would read this month to month, but I I think in a trade it would be fun as a fan of the show. Oops. So Coke, for those Coke is a hell of a drug. For those that don't know, Steve Burke, family fifty four, stay nasty. He has a really great channel. I've linked it below. He even put out some videos today. Guy's been working hard, rebrand the whole rebranding, it's happening. Uh, he's also jumping into great live streams of guys like D Runk, Comic Head 84. Uh, he's on the, the the Chino Comics and more when they're doing their new comic books uh, on Tuesday. You're a busy guy. Is there something coming up, Steve, that people can look forward to from you? Yes, I am going to be doing another unboxing, I believe, tomorrow or the next day. And I'm also going to be doing a comic book collection updates. I'm gonna take you through my entire collection over a series of about four videos. And on one of those videos, I'm gonna show my higher price books and the ones that are not graded. And hopefully people can help me decide which ones I should get graded and which ones I should not. So that should be happening in the next week or so. And also I, I did a live sale for my LCS um, twice now, and they just bought another collection Ooh, I saw the last one and you guys had some fire books, man. So like I'm talking some expensive Spider-Man books, like probably the first two that you can think of, they will be for sale in the next auction that we do. Dang. And that should be next week sometime. So 
And that's on your channel, right? Burke Family 54 Comics. Boom. And again, the link is right down below uh, for his. And he's been in the chat. If you guys don't know Steve, you got to check him out. Alec, do you have anything coming up for you? Obviously, on Saturday, something exciting. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, the, f the first two Spider-Mans I thought of were 471 and 511. And I assume that's what you're talking about. <laughs> um, tomorrow night, uh, unannounced until now, uh, Comic Spectre and Discovery Bay and I might be doing a Spider-Man unboxing because we each got four boxes that are supposed to be coming tomorrow. So if they show up around 11 o'clock. Um, Who's hosting that? I don't know. Uh, one of us. So subs subscribe to all three channels just in case because they're great channels anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, you should be subscribed to those other fine gentlemen. Um, so uh, one of us will be hosting a show tomorrow night where we're going to uh, unbox some Spider-Man boxes, uh, Spider-Man booth boxes. Uh, I'm also getting um, a couple of boxes from Flip Mode Comics from Instagram. And I invited them onto my channel to do that unboxing at some point. Not sure when, because I have to coordinate with them. And I know uh, Felipe from that channel just got married. So I don't know. And then I'm moving. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait to open them. Uh, and then Saturday, um, in fact, uh, somebody, Joe4771, said, What well, oh, comics? Do your favorite rapper impressions, please. Well, that is a great segue because I am hosting an auction Saturday night um, with Tank Collects, uh, who also has a crazy collection. And I just finished editing um, a little teaser preview video of just some of the stuff that's going to be going up. Uh, and I'm probably going to release that tomorrow morning. Um, but at the same time, as my auction, Thoro Kiboro is also having an auction, so please watch both on two screens because I uh, don't want to let you guys miss anything or, you know, have competing shows. Your sponsion was a good good auction. Yeah, I just did the sponsion. Um, I ended up making a decent amount of money for, for my friend's little unborn child. Um, so he was happy about that. And I still have some of his stuff. So that may be going up for auctions as well. Yeah, I got some great ASM books. That was really great. Go, go, Power Rangers. Yeah, I've got that guy too. <laughs> I also have an Alpha 5 somewhere. Alec is into everything and knows about everything. He really is. It's because I was an unpopular teenager. I think we all have that in common, so it's, uh, yeah, everybody can cash <laughs> that chip. Hey, no, I played football in high school. <laughs> White Whale Comics is for the children, just like Wu-Tang. <laughs> yeah, my high school playing football did not make you popular because our football team sucked. Oh, dude, we are, I went to a school where, like, I can't remember the last time we didn't have a winning record. <laughs> as far as my channel, I don't have anything big coming up this week, and it, I'm looking at next Wednesday because it's possible that I have some conflicts for next Wednesday. I'm hoping it's not true, but it is possible that I won't be around. But Alec is hosting, and Alec, you want to tell about next Wednesday's book? Um, no, because I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> it's an image title, right? Is that what we decided? <laughs> Setting up for success. I'm in number one, and I'm going to talk about that. No, the book is called Sea of Stars. Yeah, thanks. Issue number one. Uh, the writer is Jason Aaron good. with Stephen Green and Dennis Hallam doing the art. Yeah, it this looks rad. I just couldn't. Image number it. one. Yeah, here's the. I can show the. That's what the cover looks like there. Sea of Stars, issue number one. I like how you guys do like normally like books off the beaten path for the most part. You're not just doing, Hey, we're doing ASM this week or we're, we're doing the flash this week. You know what I mean? I like how you guys do like, you know, a lot of indie books too. Yeah. We, we try to mix it up do some 
you know, big two and some indie stuff. And, you know, we just don't want to have to do a Batman book every week. Because <laughs> there is a Batman book every week. <laughs> Comics who explains that I like oh. the Frizen Carmen San Diego cover. <laughs> Frizen Carmen San Diego cover? For Lois Lane one. Oh, yeah. That is a fun one. She's cover. got the fedora. The fedora, yeah. TJ's giving me devil horns. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what I said. I'm sure I un divulged something that I said I wanted. I didn't hear it. So he's he's got he's got eagle ears for those kind of things. <laughs> Is that a thing? Oh, uh, eagle ears. One of my friends messaged me some uh, Power Rangers porn. Do you want to see it? Oh dear God. No. Uh, no, I don't know that you want that on my channel. Yeah. I told him I wanted all of them. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you meant actual porn. So Did I was you? Like, oh, no. See, that's that was uh, that's the joke, John. You're 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 brick family. Hashtag stay nasty. <laughs> Hashtag stay nasty. <laughs> Uh, huh. Well, thanks everybody for coming, and we should have Discovery Bay as a guest next week to discuss this Sea of Stars. So, uh, there you go. Uh, Alec is having a Sea of Stars to discuss Sea of Stars, but it may just be me and JB, me which and JB stars, and not. Fit I'm gonna forward. come up with a theme song called "Me and JB." JB and the Whale. Ooh, is that like uh... <laughs> JB and the Bear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was actually about a chimp. Right. Not a bear. Well, wasn't the JB, wasn't JB the chimp? Oh, I don't and the know. the other guy was the bear. He, they called him bear. I was busy watching Power Rangers. Well, it, his his real name is Jose. So you can call him Jose as well. <laughs> we, got, we got options on options on options. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope you have a great night. I appreciate you staying around. Leave us a comment if you thought this didn't derail too much. Let us know what you <laughs> thought about Batman Damned and how it finished out. And uh, hope to see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.